Did you hear that? That's the market bell. You know what that means? It's time for On Top and Hot with John Zadar. This is January 24th. It is Tuesday. Now, we're going to talk about OTC and penny stocks like we do in all of these videos, but we are looking at them from a different angle. Most of virtually all of the videos before, we were looking at stocks that were standing out, that were running hard, making big gains, doing 10, 20, 100 times their normal volume. And those are pretty easy to find. And worse than that, they're hindsight. Most of them hit highs they never returned to. They fall down and, well, there was no continuation. There was no more gains to be made on those. So I'm wasting your time. I'm wasting my DD, right? So what we're doing now is we're trying to find stocks before they run. Not as easy. This is where skill comes in. So I am looking at charts as my primary source of information. Does the chart have a setup? I mean, it takes one heck of a catalyst to bring a chart out of the grave up into the light. But if you see one coming up into the light and has a catalyst coming up behind it to push it, that's a whole different ball game. And those are the sort of stocks I've been looking for. Now we are looking at penny stocks. They're on the OTC, the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange. They're everywhere. It's any stock under five bucks. So wherever the charts take us, that's where we're gonna go. Now, when I do my research on an OTC stock specifically, well, actually on any stock to be completely honest, this is my go-to site, the otcmarkets.com website. I love it primarily because it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC for every single OTC stock. I don't know of any other site that does that. And that saves me a heck of a lot of time rather than running around the internet looking for all those bits and pieces I need about one company. But I do use it for my major exchange stocks too. They do bring in some information here. Yeah, there's normally gaps, but that's what the internet's for. But the OTC market is here to save you the investor time. That's why they put it here. Notice how blase it is, the colors. They don't even want you hanging around. They don't even make it pretty. And you don't see a whole heck of a lot of advertisements. So that's why I like this site. It gives me my news, my financials, my share structure in real time through the day. You do have to refresh the page, but if something just changed, they'll put it up right now. It's not like they wait to the end of the day to update it. So I love it. So let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. That's looking pretty bleak. We better get a bounce. That is a big drop from yesterday. A ah, little drop. Okay. Well, our dollar volume is equal to yesterday, 1.7 billion. We're hoping for two, 2.1 billion. Think of that as getting into second gear. Share volume, we're still in first gear. Second gear is again up near 10 billion. We do hit that every now and then, but it's been a very long time. And oh, sad days. We're under our threshold floor of 250,000. That has been about the low where we go. We have broke through it before and we just seem to bounce right back up between 250 and 300, but we're under it right now. So it wasn't a great day. Now, I wasn't following the stocks that were ripping it today. I mean, I seen them, but I wasn't paying hard attention to them. Again, I was scanning charts, looking for charts that had set up. And I am starting my scan, oh, down at like 9% gains for the day, up to 15%, maybe 20. I'm looking for stocks that are coming up. I want to see a rise. Now, we might see a stock that has fallen and just looks like a great recovery opportunity. But that's primarily what I'm looking for. And then I go see if I can find news that can catapult it. We don't want news that came out today about something that happened today. Day. We want news that came out mm, a, a little while ago and says something's going to happen in the next set of time and we want to get our position before that time ends. So with that in mind, let's go see what I found for you today. So you're kind of curious to what goodies I brought you today? So am I. First one we're going to take a look at is Drone Shield. This is a company out of Australia. Their ticker is DRSHF. That F on the end of an OTC stock 99% of the time means it's a foreign company. As you can probably guess, Drone Shield is involved with drones. Now, there's a lot of companies on the exchange dealing with drones, and they've each got their own niche. Some are dealing with delivery services, some are into security, some are monitoring agricultural areas. This company, too, has their own niche, and it seems to be very profitable. They are into warfare. 
and anti-warfare. Now they do do other things, but it seems that's where the boatload of money is coming from. Now we're going to be looking at some news that came out on January 9th and a paragraph from some news that came out in December because actually the January news talks about that news piece and you're going to see the catalyst for why I think this stock is going to run. So what was the gains today? We had about 10% hit almost 28 cents. She's on the pink tier in current, but has no green ticks, no verified transfer agent, no verified profile. I would like to see those, but I'm not sweating bullets about it. Now, there's not a lot of information I can share with you here, but I'm going to share what I can. Relative volume, without any catalyst, no new news, no fresh filings. Well, it's double. It's twice as much as normal. She went from 16,000 shares up to 36,000 shares. Yeah, I know. They're real low numbers. And that's what we have to start expecting looking at the stocks we're looking at because we're looking at stocks under the radar. Stocks that haven't been noticed by everybody yet. We're trying to find a position early before they take off, before everybody else gets in. So get used to seeing this sort of thing. But as I said, that is over a 100% increase on our volume today. It is growth. Share structure. All right, I would normally go jumping into the pink disclosures to get the float. You can normally find them there, but I'm gonna give you a heads up right now. They have no disclosures here. None, none at all. And when I went to look up the float, I couldn't find it, nowhere. I mean, I did find a float. It came up a couple times as being over 400 million shares. Well, how was that possible? There's only 397 all together, outstanding. So I knew that was wrong. So I honestly have no clue what the float is. Financials, we don't get any information here. Regardless what button you click, there's just nothing to be seen. Now, I'm not real surprised by this. I see this a lot with Canadian companies. Uh, what they do is they're filing over in their own countries. Yes, they must file, but nothing says they have to file here in America. They file over there and the information just isn't coming over here. So jump into Canada's whatever organization takes care of their filings, you can see it. Here, we'd have to go to Australia. That's how you get the information. Disclosures, well, as I said, they've got nothing here. I mean, we've got some SEC filings back in 2018, but we have no financials here whatsoever. So there's not a lot of information here, including no news, nothing. But there is news, there is financials. I read somewhere that it was June of last year, they were at $3 million revenue. So at least we've got a start. We've got an inkling idea of what they're doing, which will come into play when we look at the news I found from Australia. Yeah, there is information out there, but it's all coming out of their own country. They're not putting a whole lot of push to getting it out. So this is the first piece of news. So we're looking at news from January 9th. And before we look at the news, let's take a look at the company. Drone Shield provides artificial intelligence based platforms for protection against advanced threats, such as drones and autonomous systems. We offer customers bespoke counter drone and electric warfare solutions and off the shelf products designed to suit a variety of terrestrial, maritime and airborne platforms. Our customers, they include the military, intelligence community, government, law enforcement, critical infrastructure and airports globally. So the news here tells us that they had just received a new purchase order for approximately $11 million for a government agency customer. And the order includes several different types of drone shield counter drone equipment. The order is expected to be delivered by mid 2023. The proceeds, that is the money, is expected to be received across March and June 2023. There's your window right there. There is $11 million, but that's not it, folks. As we move into repeat $10 million orders, they had gotten an $11 million order last month, so they've had two orders, total of $22 million. As we move into repeat $10 million orders, Drone Shield has arrived at its inflection point. Importantly, this order does not require any working capital due to the payment structure from the customer. Just like with our other $11 million order received last month, the purchase contains an annual subscription component as we move to annual reoccurring revenues becoming a meaningful part of our business. There is some sort of service that these drones require 
sent to them on a regular basis. So they're getting a subscription. It sounds like an annual fee. They're going to be paid yearly for this service to be constant so that they can use these drones the way they're meant to be used. The two $11 million orders follow other recent wins for Drone Shield in the last couple of months. And what they're basically talking about here are key people, big organizations that they're negotiating with right now, opening up doors for a lot more business. Additionally, in November 2022, Drone Shield welcomed a $3.7 million investment from Epirus Inc., a high growth U.S. defense technology company developing software defined directed energy systems. Ooh, that sounds serious. And then the news that came out in December. They say the $11 million, it corresponds to a combined value of both phases that they were talking about. Payment for each batch is expected to be received within one month of each delivery. They had one in December, they get paid in January. They have another one in January, they get paid in February. Now they do tell us here that the proceeds are expected to be received across March and June. So maybe there's a 30 day delay behind it because that's exactly what that is, a 30 day delay. In either case, folks, there's your window of opportunity right there. This company right now has $22 million that are coming into them and they didn't have to have any working capital. So most of that money is gonna be theirs. And what did we say? June of last year, 2022, they had $3 million. So this is gonna be a huge increase. The problem I see here is that they're not communicating with the US markets. Where is our news? Where is our financials? I think the stock would move better if they would bring that information over to us. Now, maybe they will when that happens. I honestly don't know. That's the only shortfall I see in all of this is that the Australian company is not communicating to its US investors. All right, let's go take a look at that chart and see what opportunity awaits us. Not that I think this chart needs a whole lot of explanation, We'll go ahead and look at it anyway, since we're here. This is DRSHF. This is a six month, four hour chart. And of course we're doing our charting on Think or Swim, the free trading platform you get just for signing up for your free account with TD Ameritrade. Now, while we're looking at the chart over here, I'm gonna keep the long-term chart here. That is a four hour chart, same exact stock. So you'll always have a big picture. As we come in closer, sometimes we lose perspective. So she has been falling with this gentle roll downhill until she hit this low bubble of 10 cents in mid-September. Didn't really respond to it, just started going sideways and then she hit it again here in mid-December. This time she took it seriously. She bounced off of that, pushed herself right over that 200. No change of pace. She's been growing ever since then, sitting right on top of her nine day SMA. Looks picture perfect. Not a whole lot of extra volume to talk about as we're already aware of. Our technicals are very strong. These have been growing for over a month. These have been pushing up the PPO, the ADX, which shows me trend continuation. If this keeps going the same direction, I know my trend is going the same direction. MACD looks like my PPO, percentage price oscillator. Everything looks good here. And we're in the overbought on the RSI. As I said, picture perfect. 20 day, one hour view. Well, she's growing as we expected. She had a low 20 days ago of 14 cents. She's a little over 100% gains there. Pushing up, riding her nine day SMA. She does come a little bit underneath it, tapping her 20. That's as far as we'd like to see her fall. She comes right back up, repositions herself on the nine. Now, we see it is getting further and further away. You see how close the nine day was to our 20 day SMA. Not too far. Well, the further away they get, the more likely there will be a drop that could settle down on that lower spot. So we want to watch for that. We do see our technicals on the one hour are just starting to roll over right now. You want to, if you're going to get into these, you want to catch it on a downhill swipe before it comes back up. But you want to catch it as it's coming up after it already made its dip. I know, tricky, tricky. Five day, five minute. Well, we expected to be seeing her climbing, but what we notice here is that she climbs in the morning and cools off in the afternoon, up in the morning and down in the afternoons. So there's a trend to catch. If you wanna get your best price, it's probably gonna be in the afternoon. Our technicals, they were strong, but they're showing a little bit of rollback right now. They are showing some cooling off. But you can see, 
She has had a serious trend change here, folks. She was coming downhill. Once she got over that 200, she has been busting loose. And with this big revenue coming in, if they can get the news out, especially to us, I'm sure there's more traders in the US than there is in Australia, this thing could run. So fingers crossed we hear about it because then we'll see it as well. Next giblet we're going to take a look at is Sissy. This is a penny stock on the NASDAQ, ticker SISI Shine Co. Inc. Now she's had some filings, about three or four of them in the last month or two. She's had a big news press come out last week about a deal she's involved with and very excited about. And between that news and those filings, looks to me like there's a catalyst building to push this stock up and it could use it. It just had a serious fall and I'm not real sure why it fell, but it looks showing signs of turning around right now. So that's why we're taking a look at this. There's a lot of gain sitting on the table if this thing does turn. So what does this company do? Well, jumping into one of their news presses, they tell us that Shineco Inc. utilizes modern engineering technologies and biotechnology systems to develop and produce Chinese herbal medicines, organic agricultural produce, and specialized textiles, amongst other products. The company also plans to develop innovative drugs and medical devices, as well as diagnostic devices and a treatment platform for cancer patients. Wow, they've got every finger into something different, don't they? So they're involved with a lot. What was the relative volume around the company today considering she doesn't have any catalysts on the table? Ouch! No, that's not under the radar. That's rejection. That's people being upset. Dropping from about a half a million shares down to 63,000. And when you look at the chart, you can see there was some attitude here recently. I don't know why, but she took a huge drop. And right now, it looks like she's thinking about coming back up, which is why we're looking at it, because there is some potential strong gains sitting on that chart. Share structure for Shine Co. Did go look this up. Found the same numbers a couple of times, 11 something, 12 something, I'm talking millions. <laughs> 11 to 12 million is what it looks like we've got here, which isn't a bad float at all for the NASDAQ. Financials for Shine Co. Ooh, look, from 2019 to 2022, she's been dropping heavily. 31, 10, 3, 2 million. Now we know those are millions because we've got three zeros up there. We got to put behind any of these numbers. That is a serious drop in revenues right now. So she needs a turnaround. There's no doubt about that. And the news that they came out with a week ago talks about that turnaround. What do we got on the quarterly? Well, she's holding her own. She's paying her bills right now. And she's even losing a little bit of money doing that. 535,000 she did in the quarter of September last year. So we've got some more quarterly reports coming out anytime now. Disclosures may even be over here. Um, nope, there's that last quarterly report, the 10Q, that came out for September and they brought it out in November. Now here's the forms we need to consider. This was their letter from the NASDAQ saying that they needed to get that bid price up in the next six months. This 8K is a deal they just made, and this 8K is a deal they just made. They've made two different deals, and they talk about them both in the news press. And then this uh, three form, this is the shares they had to exchange to make the deal. So that's everything caught up right there. Now let's take a look at that news. So going back a little bit for Shineco, Shineco's involved in a lot of different things. Back here in December, Shineco's subsidiary was granted a patent from the FDA marketing for its in situ fecal specimen sampling device. Now we actually talked about this in one of my videos. It is a way to test your fecal, your poo, without having to get near the poo. It stays trapped inside something else so it never has to be pulled out, smelled, touched, none of that stuff. And then here in the middle of uh, December, Shineco subsidiary receives prior approval supplement for NMPA Jiangsu Bureau for the marketing approval of their cardiac five minute test. I don't know anything about that, but you can see it's something that works with your heart in five minutes. So they're involved in a lot of different things, like they said they were. Then we had news come out a week ago. Let's just jump on into that. All right, now I gotta remember to keep scrolling up so my big head don't block the information. 
This came out on the 17th. Shineco Inc., a producer and distributor of Chinese herbal medicines, on January 13th, entered into a non-binding framework agreement, also called a letter of intent, with Dream Partner Limited to acquire 80% interest in the company. Now, Dream Partner owned indirectly 100% of Chongying Wintis Group, which is a private company based in China that produces a specialized antiviral silk fabric that can widely be used in the medical, hygiene, pharmaceutical, and personal health fields. So there's a very unique special product in this little company called Wintis, and it appears that's what the company's really after. They paid $40 million to make this deal, but all they talk about is Wintis. We are excited about the prospect of the potential transaction with Wintus. In addition to its antibacterial and antiviral fabrics, we believe that the potential synergies with the other company they did a deal with, Changzhou Biowin Pharmaceuticals, is compelling as it will further advance the exploration of animal fiber biodegradable medical devices as well as open up new fields of discovery. We believe the potential acquisitions will enable us to achieve critical mass and an enlarged footprint and greater commercial development opportunity. And that's what I'm really talking about here, folks. Critical mass. I hope they don't use that word lightly. It really means a turning point, like uh, the last straw on the camel's back. <laughs> or going up a seesaw, just getting right to that point to where it tips and goes the other direction. Right at that point, critical mass to where you just explode. Now, before we leave, let's get a little more information on this Wintus Group. Chongying Wintus Group produces a leading antibacterial and antiviral fabric which can be widely used in the medical, hygiene, and pharmaceutical fields as well as for personal health protection. Wintus also uses silk animal fibers as raw materials for cardiac stents, controllable degradable bone nails, the preservation of biological specimens, facial masks, environmental protection appliances, and other life science fields. Wintus believes that its antibacterial and antiviral fabrics could play an important role in preventing and inhibiting the growth and the spread of COVID-19, which could be an area of substantial growth. Wintus was established back in 1997. So they've been in business for a while and they've got this very special fabric that can be used in a lot of different things. We're not just talking clothes that don't get germy. We're talking in the medical profession. They're actually using them as stents and stuff. So this is what we're talking about. And they said critical mass. Now this deal has not yet been completed. We haven't been given a timeline. We don't have a date here. So it is a bit speculative at best. And when we look at the chart, you'll understand why I'm looking at it. She has had a tremendous fall and there could be one heck of a recovery if our timing on getting in is right. Let's go take a look at that chart. I know it looks ugly, doesn't it? But there's a lot of recovery potential sitting there right now. This is Sissy, S-I-S-I, Shine Co. Six month, four hour chart. She's been on a downhill run here for quite a while. Hit a low in September again of 57 cents. Started to push up over this middle line here. Once she got on top of it, she got gutsy. She jumped through her 200 and even pushed herself outside of the channel, but came back down, but did not fall below that halfway point. She stayed above that and then took another big bounce. She started here on December 5th and ran to December 28th from 73 to $3.50. You're talking 450% gains there. Now, right in this area, she started stuttering, and it was right there that she got her notice from the NASDAQ that she had six months to fix her price. She fell after that notice came out, fell all the way to $2.53, and then bounced up to $3.50. And then she crashed, crashed real hard, bounced here at $1.59, came up, and then lost it, fell again only hanging on to the 200 for about five days until she gave that up and now she's bouncing across this low of 99 cents. We've got no volume, we know all that disappeared and our technicals are pretty weak right now. PPO is coming downhill, MACD's gone flat, RSI is at 37. Four hour don't look too good. The only thing I see are those two green bars today and they're under the nine day SMA. 
they're still under that. I would never buy a stock when the price is under a nine day SMA because it's still a coin in the air flipping. You have no idea where it's going to go. It could still fall very easily because it's in the fall mode under the nine. Let's take a look at our 20 day, one hour view. That is that high bubble, $3.50. There's that first big fall and you've seen it stop. That's why it stopped. It hit the 200 day SMA on the one hour chart. It negotiated with that 200 for a couple of days, did not want to fall. But once everybody saw that 50 day SMA cross our 200 day SMA, that's a wimpy, wimpy move. That's when it gave it up. Price just started falling from then on and we hit 99 cents about four or five days ago, hit it again yesterday and now she's bouncing up and she's just put herself on top of the nine day, just got there right now and she's still under the 50 day SMA. Our technicals show recovery is in motion. We got a crossover right here starting but it's very light. Uh, the blue PPO is going up. My ADX is going down. When you see those two spreading apart, the price is going up. It's going up ever so slightly, but it is going up. MACD is climbing as well. Same thing, very slight. And our RSI is climbing. It's now jumped up to 47. Five day, five minute look. This is the tail. All right, so we had $1.67 a week ago and we've been bouncing off of that low of 99 cents. We have just gotten over the two, the 50 day SMA on our five minute chart and we are right under that 200. It looks like she's trying to sneak her way up over that. And I get the feeling that once she gets over that, things could start to boil. We get a piece of news about this deal closing with Wintus Dream Partners. That could be all it takes. Maybe they put a projection in there on the revenues, whatever. If a piece of news comes out, we're at a great entry right now to get some beautiful gains. So we are right now at a dollar 12. She is right over the 50 day on top of her nine underneath the 200. Technicals, ah, they're negotiating folks. I see we got a crossover on the MACD. PPO has gone flat. It's very difficult to read. We need to watch the chart. We need to see this get up over top of that 200 and chances are you're going to see your price bars get big at that point. Now I'm not saying ride this all the way to the top. We're looking for gains. Take gains when you can get them. If she's running hard and you're getting nervous, you're afraid that you're going to watch a fall come and you're going to lose all your gains. It's never an all or nothing decision. You don't have to sell everything you own as it's going up. Sell one third of it. Get your money back. Get some of your money back and let the rest ride. Scratch that itch. Put some money in your pocket. Calm your nerves down and ride. If she starts making you nervous again, sell some more. Sell another third and then take that last third up as high as you can and practice hitting the ceiling. And as soon as you see it start to fall, take that as well. Don't worry about not making as much gains because you're taking some away take some away, keep some of those gains in case you lose control of the play and she tumbles faster than you can get out. At least you've got something in your pocket. So Sissy, S-I-S-I, -S -I, lots of potential gains sitting on that chart. News waiting to come out about a deal where they say they could hit critical mass. Wouldn't you like to see some numbers in that news? Now, if you've been waiting patiently for me to get to a SPAC warrant, your patience has just been rewarded. This is a SPAC, Vision Sensing Acquisition Corps, and the ticker for the warrant is VSACW. She finished the day just under four cents at 0 .0376 and almost 15% gains. Now they had news come out last month. They are in the midst of closing a deal, in the midst of a merger. This came out December 8th. Vision Sensing Acquisition announces that New Site Imaging has filed a registration statement on Form F4 regarding their planned business combination. As you would expect, there's lots of filings that have to be completed and put in before a merger is finalized. So they're just letting us know that the paperwork is moving and getting to where it needs to go. Now let's get a little information on New Site Imaging. What are they all about? New Site Imaging develops advanced CMOS image sensor chips for 3D machine vision and spectral analysis. New Site's depth camera sensors for machine vision serves verticals such as mobile and metaverse, robotics, industry 4.0, and automotive safety. 
New site has also developed a spectral chip backed by AI technology that has multiple uses in rapid pathogen detection and in continuous condition-based monitoring of fluid flows, including water quality. Speaking of water, New Sight's water site subsidiary Aqua Ring provides real-time AI-based monitoring of flow systems or processes, including installations for water quality monitoring. That's very important. The company has U.S. and EU patents and has received multiple grants by the Israeli Innovation Authority. So that's who the company is. Now they tell us up here that the deal was initiated on August 30th and that is when they entered into this business agreement and between the two of them they have 317 million dollars and here's the important part folks when they're going to close the deal expected to close in the first quarter of 2023 january february march this is the end of january so we're looking at 60 days at the most I mean, it could go longer, that's the expected date, but if they stay within that realm, we're at 60 days, and it could be sooner. Now, while this deal has been coming together, the company, New Site, has not been sitting on their duff doing nothing. They're in business, they're making money. As a matter of fact, there has been news coming out about this company. They had two conferences, one in Las Vegas at the end of December, and one in January. One was for corporations to show their technology and find new customers. And the other one was to investors, to excite them and bring in more investors. But they also tell us here in January that they received their first international computer partnership for LiDAR solution for automotive safety. If you don't know what LiDAR is, it's the technology that makes machines capable of seeing. This is how our cars can drive by themselves. And then they got an award. This came out today. Watersight awarded XTC Startup Competition first place win at the annual Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. First place. First place this water company got Aqua Ring for what their products do. So there is a lot still going on. There's a lot of things building up and I think we could see some gains come out of this. Let's look at the charts and see where they're gonna be. So we are looking at the chart now for VSACW, six month, four hour chart, of course. We got a high bubble back here in July of 27 cents and mid-December we hit a low of two and a half cents. She has been falling all of this time but got stuck in a channel right here with some huge bounces. We had two 400 and 300% bounces right there. So we can see some big jumps on this stock. And from this point, she was falling till she hit that low and she's just been going sideways. Our volume is starting to pick up and she's just gotten on top of the nine. It's a big deal to me, as you can tell. She just got on top of the line and we've got a green bar. Our technicals are very weak, but they all show that they are pushing up ever so slightly, but they are pushing up. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. Not a lot of information here. We can see we're at a low of two and a half cents, hit a high of four cents, and right now we are at 3.7. She has been climbing up. She needs to get over this 50 day SMA. Our technicals, uh, ever so slight updraft, not much at all. Five minute, five day. Not a lot to be seen there either. There hasn't been a lot of trading, right? Not a lot of volume, and that's what you need if you're gonna see the charts moving and be able to guess. But we do see she is rolling up right now. She got on top of her nine. See, she's underneath the nine, started cutting through it, had a pullback here, and then pushed up, and we ended the day at a high, and we are on top of the nine. All the technicals right now look strong for the few that we have. So she looks like she's in the beginning of turning around right now, folks. We aren't seeing anything big, but that's how you catch big gains. You catch them before they run. Now, we've got some supports here. We got one support sitting here at uh, five cents. 
So you've got about 20% gain to get to that one. We've got another support here at uh, actually resistances because we're underneath them at 7.2 cents. That's 100% gains. And then we've got another one up here at 10 cents. That would give you like 300% gains. So she has steps to climb here, folks. She's got potential. She's got a deal sitting on the table. The company they're merging with is doing more and more business. They're getting recognized for what they're doing. So I would anticipate when the news comes out that the deal has been closed, there's going to be a pop on the warrant because now the stock, the $10 share has value. It's got a company associated with it that's making revenues. So when that stock becomes valuable, the warrant becomes valuable. I expect this to pop. Now's a real good time to look at it. She has gotten on top of the nine and she is about ready to cross the 20. Ever so little growth, folks. Keep your eye on it. She may surprise you with a huge bounce, especially when that news comes out. Hopefully we found some companies here that are gonna make us some money. I definitely see some potential there. That last warrant, definitely when the news comes out that the merger has been completed, it's gonna jump. The stock itself will be worth more. That automatically makes the warrant worth more. And warrants can be cashed in once the price hits 11. Of course, you gotta pay 11.50. But at that point, the warrants are alive. So warrants become worth more. So we're watching that one. Then we are also keeping our eye on Drone Shield. Those drones in warfare, anti-warfare. They're getting huge contracts. None of the other drone companies I've seen are getting those sort of contracts. They've had two of them back to back, month after month for 11 million, and they're just getting started. That is a good one to consider, folks. And the last stock we looked at was Shineco. Shineco has got a deal going on. They're very interested in this anti uh, viral fabric. It can do a lot more than just make clothes. It can help the medical industry where there's a lot of money involved. And they say they're ready to hit critical mass when this deal closes. So when that piece of news comes out, we expect that one to run too. Keep up with your DD folks. Most of what we're looking at depends on something else happening. And if it happens without you watching, you're going to be bummed, especially if you got yourself an entry. Remember folks, due diligence. It's not work. It is a treasure hunt. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.